thanks. I'm safe. My name's Stanley Jones. I'm a precision engineer for Aquarium Electronics. An engineer? I would have thought an engineer could handle a little car trouble. Yeah, me too, but that hunk of scrap is far beyond even my skills. You know them doctors who get sick because they don't look after themselves? Now I know how they feel. <laughs> oh, jeez. How do I end up in these situations? Oh, yeah. That's right. I'm a fucking idiot. Well, there's no need to tell it like it is. Oh, shut the Fuck up, voice over me. We've got this generation's Othello to review. So The Sniper 2 is a game with a bit of a backstory. You'd think it was going to be like Street Sniper 3D, an inept sniper game with a series of missions that lead to nothing. Or at least I thought that would be the case. However, it actually turns out that this is a sequel, not an in-name only sequel either, to a Japanese game called Sniper, which only got a Jap release. For clarification, that's the Jap region code and not me being racist. Sniper was released on the PS1 a few years prior to this game. And what's weird about that game, this game, and a number of others in this collection, is that they're all volumes upon volumes of video games that were released by the Japanese publishing company, D3 Publisher. Anyway, this was known as the Simple 2000 series, and spanned over the PS1 and PS2 era, with a few of the games being picked up by budget publishers in the West, such as Midas, Phoenix and 505 Games. Midas Interactive has done its best to hide the fact that this is a Japanese game, even going as far as to rig up some Hitman Go-esque visuals for a loading screen that doesn't represent the game in the slightest. Anyway, given how generic the box art looks to this thing and the promo stuff, you can hardly blame me for being so surprised that this thing has a story and cutscenes. They are the main attraction, and it's fucking glorious! Each segment opens up with an intro like this is a TV show. I've noticed that Metal Gear and Death Stranding do this, and I, I don't fucking get it. This wasn't released in installments. If it was, they should remove these from the collection because they serve no purpose other than to waste time. The text says, hard-boiled shooting game, THE SNIPER, heart of heavy rain jazz. I, I, I don't know what the fuck that means. Anyway, you get this massive exposition dump as to what the shit happened in the last game. Basically, some dude from a Final Fantasy game that was cancelled used to be a firefighter. His name, Harry C. Spencer, a firefighter. During the rescue of a girl named Melissa, he stumbled across a counterfeiting ring. As a result, he lost his job and his girlfriend. How? Like, was the counterfeiting ring part of the corrupt fire service? Was he framed? How did this happen? Claire Anderson was killed by the Mafia. Burning with anger, Harry swore revenge upon her killers. Oh, okay. I guess I did a Jared Wars then and just sort of assumed that it had done making its point. Could this guy slow down? I'm having trouble absorbing this shit. Leaving the city, he trained under an ex-military vet to become a killer. Time passed. Harry, now a top-ranked sniper, returned to the corrupt city in order to exact his revenge. I do love this. He goes away, becomes a sniper. Sorry, no, a top-ranked sniper. And then he just toddles on back to the city. All within a matter of weeks. What, is it like getting ordained on the internet? Can you just find a website that just gives you a certificate to make you a proper sniper? <laughs> there, he received a phone call from a girl who called herself only CA. She offered to provide him with information on the Mafia's activities. Even through his lingering doubts, Harry strangely found that he could bring himself to trust CA. 
So with her help and advice, Harry began a concerted attack on the Mafia. It was only after killing the Mafia boss and completing his revenge that CA appeared before him. Well, this is kind of grounded so far. I mean, the animations are kind of silly, and things seem to just happen in soap opera time, but at least nothing too crazy has happened. She was Melissa, the girl whom Harry previously saved. What is more, she possessed the memories of Harry's murdered girlfriend, Claire. <sighs> D3! And so, amid this confusion, their journey began. A journey in search of something lost. Alright. So this firefighter becomes a killer sniper and he's getting revenge on the mafia. Oh my god, look at that. So we fast forward to a few years down the line and everyone's got a next gen upgrade and are currently making their way down the road. Until they pass some poor bugger whose car is fucked waving as hard as his wee little dodgy skeleton animation will let him. But then the protagonist remembers that he's racist and drives past, leaving him to die in the desert. His young companion asks why he's being such a cock, and he's like, Oh yeah, shit, you're right, I'm meant to be the good guy. So, I'm just gonna play this bit out for you, just so you can see how stilted this dialogue is. Because it is pretty fucked, I'm not gonna lie. I thought you were a better person than that. Look, right now. Right now has nothing to do with this. If this mess is going to make you stop being yourself, maybe you should just get caught. You're right, CA. I have had my revenge. I don't have to live like that anymore, to be on edge all the time. It's very reminiscent of Dead or Alive 2 in the sense that it has kung fu dub acting recorded into tinfoil. But what makes this really weird is the fact that the vast majority of these actors have actually been in real things. John Schwab, the sniper dude, actually has featured in a few movies and video games, including Kick-Ass 2, Xenoblade Chronicles, and Teletubbies. Ellie Fairman is actually quite a prolific actor in the United Kingdom. She's featured in several real movies such as the 2011 film Blitz, Silent Witness, and Serious Sam 2. My point is that even though the acting in this really doesn't show it, these aren't inexperienced actors or low-level actors. In fact, a lot of them have been in movies at this point. But the only one that really shines through is Stefan Ashton Frank, who is... Wow, thanks. I'm safe. My name's Stanley Jones. Stanley Jones. This guy is the highlight for me, partly because he's the strongest performance, but also because his character is very reminiscent of Zack from Dead or Alive. I actually thought it was the same voice actor at one point, but apparently not. I'm a precision engineer for Aquarium Electronics. An engineer? I would have thought an engineer could handle a little car trouble. Yeah, me too, but that hook of scrap is far beyond even my skills. You know them doctors who get sick because they don't look after themselves? Now I know how they feel. <laughs> I'm Harry. Harry Spencer. Former firefighter. I'm... Claire. Claire Anderson. Oh yeah, that's smart. Just tell everyone your fucking name. You'll never get caught doing that. Bunch of idiots. Oddly enough, this does almost backfire on them, but then a spring goes off inside Stanley's guts. Uh, where have I heard those names? Somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry too. So they decide to go and get lunch instead, and they drive Lady Penelope's car to the nearest roadside taco stand. Ooh, careful. The last time Billy Roberts went to one of those, he was sensing ghosts for a week. Anyway, the opening kicks off. I don't get this Japanese episodic thing. And I especially don't get why people still do it in this day and age. All of Hideo Kojima's games are doing it now, and I can't fathom why. Still, I do kind of like the Persona 4-esque opening scenes. As pointless and redundant as they are. I'd rather not have them, but they could look worse, I guess. By the way, I'm not kidding. The place where Stanley takes them is a roadside burger shop. 
The guy just oozes class. I do like how it's called Prestoni's Diner, or Preston's Diner, when it's not really a diner. It's more like a food hall. I recommend the chicken special, best for miles around. Why are you walking like that, Mr. Jones? Do you have problems? <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot what game this is. Of course he has problems. Then Stanley accidentally bumps into his actor's second character, Gabriel Armitage. Uh, I'm very sorry. Ooh, scary guy. Gabe isn't going to be a thing until the last mission, so don't worry about him. Abby, three chicken specials and some coffees as well. So, got your eye on her, have you? These are the hardest things to review. The kind of things where a three second clip says a hell of a lot more than a thousand words ever could. I mean, look at him, he walks like a Sims 1 character. What a guy. So, here we are. What's next, Harry? Harry? What's up? Huh? I do kind of like how they've only just introduced the main character. Like, they introduced the true stars of the show beforehand, but the main titular character? Nah, leave him till last. But he smells the same as I do. Fucking what? Harry, you don't smell. I mean, the smell of a killer. Again, I reiterate. Fucking what? And there's pain in his eyes. One thing that I'm having to do is cut out a lot of these awkward pauses, because a lot of them are just... Fucking hell, 90% of my recording's runtime is just... Is everyone brain damaged or something? Sure you're not just thinking too much? <sighs> nah, mate, there's no danger of that. And anyway, he is totally different from you. He didn't seem half as cold for one thing. Oh yeah, he looked like such a warm, colourful, fuzzy man. That's why Stanley had to get the fuck out of his way. <laughs> Just stay where you are. Damn! How did they find me? They friends of yours, boss. They certainly give a warm reception anyway. How come they're so happy to see you? Don't call me boss. Oh yeah, don't answer his questions. Just be a pedantic little shit. That's much more important to surviving this mess. Come on, it kinda sounds cool, okay? Stanley, use this. Spoken with the urgency of a Ubisoft CEO looking into sexual harassment at the workplace. Abby! You gotta shoot that boss? I have a reasonable idea. So that's a negative then. Holy shit! Hot dog lady's packing heat! Hey Stanley, looks like your angel has misplaced her halo. Well, if you find it, I'll happily take it back. Bad news, boss. Or more realistically... Bad news, boss. There's some good news. Damn. I think that's a contender for my top 10 dams of all time. Just gotta remember what the other nine are now.
Oh yeah, mate, just calmly walk across the fucking war zone where bullets are flying everywhere. Brilliant! You'll be Swiss cheese before you reach it. Then I'll shoot them from here. Yeah, right. An amateur like you? Why would he think he's an amateur? Like, what if he's a former special forces agent or police officer? Just a weird thing to assume. Why not just assume the opposite? Watch and learn. A miracle! We need a miracle! <laughs> Careful what you wish for, I guess. So, we start off with our first mission objective. I hope it's optional. The gameplay on this is incredibly simple. Albeit the sniper is very rigid and doesn't really feel like you're handling a gun, it literally feels like you're guiding a crosshair with a mouse, rather than taking aim at an enemy combatant through a sniper scope, which already kind of cripples the experience. Might be better if this was one of those rail guns that had like a computer attached to it, but no, it's just meant to be a sniper rifle and it controls like a rollerball mouse, so that's good. I do like that you get a replay of the sniping, kind of like Sniper Elite V2 in its earliest stage, when it was basically just an animation test. Anyway, we completed stage one, even though there's two guys left. Oh man, you red hot! Wait, why are you celebrating, you absolute numpty? Then, we have to shoot the other two, who are apparently advancing. I guess that means towards you and not CA? That'd make some semblance of sense. So I missed the first one, but managed to wing the second one. And I'm not gonna lie, the slow-mo kills are never not funny to me. Anyway, we enter the third stage. I do love how we're on stage three and we haven't even finished the opening sequence yet. Whoa! Hey, you okay? Ha! Bring them all on! That was a close one! <laughs> oh wow, I've never seen someone go from bravado to, Oh man, we're so totally fucked now! So after taking out Idiot 9, CA is finally saved, and she sounds fucking ecstatic about it. CA! Harry! <sighs> oh, fuck! No! Hey, it's that guy again! CA! I... I just... I just... I, I, I just... What is anything anymore? Anyway, despite having JC Denton in his sights as he's walking away with Claire Redfit... I mean, CA... Who is that Our hero forgets to take the shot and just lets him leave. Damn. Yeah. And with that, bumbling incompetence begins stage four. At this point, it wastes two and a half minutes of your life with an intro and credit sequence that you've already seen at this point. And I personally hate this. It comes across as pretentious and obnoxious and just wastes the audience's time. You introduce your characters, actors, and other credited people at the start, and then at the end of your product, you show them off. You don't need to give us a refresher every five minutes. Admittedly, it's not quite as bad here. Like, I can fathom why it's here, because there's so little content in the game that it's a way of padding it out. But you'd think that a $60 game made in 2019 wouldn't do this, but it still does. So it then gives us the awkward and clumsy as fuck exposure piece, with accompanying text establishing that the lady at the diner was C-L-I-A, and she apparently pointed them in the right direction to go after the guy who kidnapped C-A.
this man who just carried CA off. So whilst I thought those mafia thugs were gunning for me, seems they were actually cleaners dispatched by the family to take out Gabriel. One more thing. That gas we just breathed in is a nasty little biological weapon called Tacomacan, developed in secret somewhere in America. Within 10 days of exposure, victims fall ill and then suffer rapid physiological breakdown. They spent most of their final days laughing their asses off at the name Tacomacan. Okay, seriously, why are we learning this through a narration exposition dump? This is what dialogue is for! How hard would it have been to have them talk about this in a cutscene? They didn't exactly have a lip-syncing or dynamic animation problem to deal with. So, I begin my first mission as a contract killer. Let's see how that goes. The target is the arms dealer, perpetrator of numerous black market deals. Oh. Shit. So yeah, I just got to shoot this pedo as he shimmies his way down the street. Just gotta make sure that Susan Jabberwocky doesn't dive out in front of me and take the bullet. Anyway, this confuses the story's other nonce who goes back to the little girl that he has bound in his crack shack. We're leaving. Okay. And that's the scene. I swear to Christ, this is the kind of story that a mentally disabled person or a child would make. Survival of the fittest is said to be a law of nature. If so, does that mean that wars can also be considered to occur in accordance with the laws of nature? I don't know the answer. But I have faith in one thing. That a person can accurately guess the feelings of another. What? Fucking what? So through a load of convoluted bollocks, it's explained that we need to shoot a briefcase as it's being exchanged between two people, or it'll explode and unleash the tackle mechan. Someday I'll be able to say that with a straight face. However, if we shoot at the right time, then the tackle mechan... That day isn't today. ...will dribble out the side of the briefcase like a bit of wet cum after premature ejaculation. And you'd know all about that, wouldn't you, narrator me? Shut the fuck up! Anyway, on this stage you get the chance to pick your vantage point, which is actually a cool feature, admittedly. Though it's kind of pointless, as you can achieve most, if not all, of the missions from both points anyway, so it feels more like a feature offered more for style than it was for substance. You are now responsible for the lives of everyone in this city. Failure is not acceptable. We pray for your success. Which one of these sex offenders is the guy with the... What, did he piss himself? I like how those guys at the cafe are just like... Mm, yes. Mm. That guy's pissed himself, yes. <laughs> A minus. I had no idea what I was doing. C.A., are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Harry, please be careful. What do you mean? There's not time to say anything more, but I'm fine, okay? Don't worry about me. Hey! C.A., hey!
fucking what? Okay, who was that? Where was that? How was that? Why was that? Fuck it. So, the next mission is the absolute worst mission in the game, as far as I was concerned. You have to assassinate Trump's former military advisor as he comes out of a nightclub, which is difficult because you only have one bullet and have to identify the target in a field of 30 or so clones. The target can come out from either side of the building, and you have to align the shot perfectly, as our clumsy fuck sniper only brought two bullets with him, and you have to use one for the skylight. He didn't think to bring any spares, but he's the world's best, guys. It took me about half an hour to do this mission, which is where most of my one hour and 54 minute playtime went. Then we have to shoot a car's wheel out to make it stop, and shoot its passenger in the back as he runs away. This sounds very difficult, but it's somehow a lot easier than that club mission. Not sure if it was blind luck, but that is sadly true that it took me far less time to do this one. I did find this one a lot easier to do at night due to the change in the pattern in the vehicles. I do like the day and the night options, but it makes me wonder if you can do it in the daytime or if it's just a trick for new players to fall for. We may never know, because I don't really care enough to replay this shit. One thing that I also kind of found annoying was shooting this asshole whilst he was in his car didn't do anything at all, because that's his safe space where he's impervious to pain. <laughs> What, that doesn't count? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> what? Oh, he got shot in the back of the head. Keep your fucking lookout in front of us. He can't have gone far. Anyway, the next bit is where you infiltrate the factory that made the Tackle McCain. The Tackle McCain factory. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Tackle McCain now. It says something about doing it in the right order, but there doesn't seem to be a right order. Just got to get it right and not waste any of your ammo by accident. I managed to take them all out after two or so attempts. I found it kinda hard to hit the weak spot, especially since the bloody camera kept moving around. And one of the cameras won't be visible from your initial vantage point, so you have to move around a bit on the ledge to take it out, a feature that I kinda forgot I had. Anyway, after taking the cameras out, you find that the horrible baddie bloke is stood behind them, waiting to strike. What are you doing here? I've had a change of heart. Quick! Give us the antidote! Now! Or tell us where you're hidden it! I see. So that's the line she fed you. I don't have it. Huh? Don't tell me you don't. Oh, no! Oh, damn! I can't believe it. So it's our fate just to die? This antidote that you're searching for, it never existed in the first place. You're lying. You have to be infected as well. CA! You're right. All of us here breathed in Tackle McCann gas. And the younger the victim, the faster the Tackle McCann acts. However, she's still fine. Now, how could that be? She has some kind of Tackle McCann resistance? Antibodies? She was used in government experiments. Her DNA has been altered, adapted, and the DNA for Tackle McCann antibodies added to her system. Genetic manipulation, huh? So that has something to do with her having Claire's memories? I don't know the details. Whilst I personally don't believe it, it may be that C.A. is under the influence of the residual memories of your murdered girlfriend, Claire. This is crazy. 
Claire's DNA was used in CA? Memories from genetic material? Well, anyway, I was saved by a serum created from her blood. She has the remainder of the serum. You can take her back now. The family lost everything. They planned on spreading the virus and hoarding the vaccine. But now, they don't know where the vaccine is. In fact, only a few CIA members do. Including Abby? They're about to get serious. They're planning on using a missile with Taka McCain warhead. There's a launch pad beyond that building. At this rate, the entire city is on the fast track to hell. Why? Why did you suddenly decide to tell us all this? I told you, I had a change of heart. Now get away from here. Harry, I'm... We'll talk later. Now go. Okay! C.A., let's move. Okay. <laughs> No! Stanley! Damn! Where's the shooter? Like hell, I'm gonna let the murderer, the greatest character in a budget video game, go free! We're gonna get that son of a bitch! figured it out. You said you hated guns, yet you're a pretty good shot. You know hacking and security systems? More than a mere engineer would know. Also, the way you appeared like that, the timing was just too perfect. So you saw right through I was investigating Abby. to know. Guess I was guided by fate. <laughs> you got that right, boss. And Gabriel showing up. I was unexpected. Both me and Abby. <clears throat> you still have a duty to save the world. There is a missile launch site beyond the factory. Failed to protect someone. Again. Harry! They're going to pay for this. Ready? Go! So now we have to take out the device's weak spot in order to save the world. Seems simple enough, but I have no idea what I'm looking for. Yeah, we could apparently get a picture of Stanley's killer as it happened, but we apparently can't get a picture of this weak spot or even draw a rough doodle of what it'll look like. 
So with no direction and a ticking time bomb, I'm going to have to make the snap decision that may or may not decide the fate of the world. God, remember when I said in my Legends review that this is what I wanted? Yeah, I've changed my mind. I want a cutscene to do it for me again. So I worked out that there's a little red spinning thing in the device, and you just have to shoot that, and that'll do the whole thing in. I just have to make the mark. Oh. Well, I guess we're fucked. One Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, one Mississippi. Shit. One Mississippi. Oh, fuck's sake. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. So after doing the Mississippis, I actually defeated the evil machine and got a grade C for my efforts. <sighs> Game's basically my GCSEs in a nutshell, I swear to Christ. So the last mission is to assassinate the devil. Oh. Oh, jeez. Oh. Sorry, hat man. Job's a job. So then it tells me to assassinate the mafia boss and save CA. But she's like miles away. Why does she need saving? He's literally on a cliff above him whilst he's running along the road. Below. Whatever. So this final bit is shooting this guy in the back as he tries to run away. How heroic. So I think he got snipers confused with crocodiles as he tries running away in zigzags and ends up looking like a nonce as he does it. That's a theme in this apparently. You only get two bullets to kill him with, and if you miss, you're fucked. Another running theme. So then I shoot him in the leg, and that f fails the mission? Why? I have a second bullet that I can kill him with. Do I only succeed if his death is halal or something? Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, I finally succeed by shooting Pedo Sanders in the ass and knocking him flat on his face. Hallelujah. Did you get him? Yes. I finished dismantling the missile as well, so... It really is over. Not quite. Hey, where are you going? You haven't worked it out yet, have you? I'm just going back for something. We never saw Gabriel again. I'd come up with <laughs> as a joke before going okay guys this is the real ending if you're waiting for the real ending rather than that obvious joke ending it's not coming that was the real ending to this real game fantastic fucking fantastic man it's just a dumb story I legitimately find this to be one of my favourite flavours of So Bad It's Good. It goes above and beyond the rest of its shovelware contemporaries in the fact that someone bothered to write a story and characters and voice at them, but they're all done so ineptly that it's just stunning to behold. Sniper 2 is one of the greatest delights that I've covered for this show. It's a beautifully inept mess of a game that I could play again and again. Well, you know, with a bit of distance in between each playthrough. 
It's what every shitty bare bones asset flip Steam game wishes that it could be, and more. And I will forever hold it up as the Schindler's List of video games. The Sniper 2 is the kind of game that I do this show for. It's a hidden gem, which is so shitty it's glorious. Now I don't just necessarily do bad games, or even so bad they're good games, but when a so bad it's good game of this caliber comes along, my day is made. And that is the kind of thing I love doing on this show. So, yeah, if anybody likes this kind of train wreck, I'd highly recommend this game. Because quite frankly, this one brought a smile to my face on numerous occasions. And if it didn't get so annoyingly difficult at times, I'd almost just recommend it entirely as a game, just for the silliness of it. So, that'll be the last episode of this show, filmed in this room. I know, sad. Five years in this room, and it's coming to an end. It's the end of an era. Uh, you might notice that a lot of it's been stripped out. Uh, there's not much left. The ceiling's different, if anyone noticed that. Um, a lot of things have been taken off the shelves. A lot of things have just been bundled onto one shelf. I'm wearing a shirt that I haven't gone outside in in literal decades because I'm moving out soon and well I've been in this room since I was about seven and all that's coming to an end so uh, hopefully I'll be able to do this one more time before Christmas I will be able to do a Phoenix game before Christmas at the very least but ideally I'll do a Phoenix game and something else but we'll see in the meantime, though, I just hope that I'm able to do this before the end of the year, because they've promised that my <laughs> internet connection isn't going to be particularly quick. <sighs> and so ends another chapter. And hopefully begins an even better one. No, in my luck, it'll be just as shit, if not shit, but we'll never, I guess we'll find out, won't we? <sighs> hey, Stan. Hey. That was uh, unfortunate. Fashion a curious about